keep in mind, Akhi. We are talking about this discussion all this time. What I was talking about is a man staying in these countries. The story changes when it's a mother and kids. Different game. Okay, Different what do, mean, game. what do you mean? How does it change? When you raise children in that mist now, now it gets worse. We were, all those evidences were talking about Sahaba, Jadid, but there's one person, the Prophet is giving pledge and he's come to me. Now the story changes when you have left your Muslim country and you ran to the lands of the non-Muslims and you brought your children here and you raised your children in this land and you given your children to them. Antony and Samantha are nurturing your daughter, Zahra, Amina, Aisha, they're nurturing their, their children for you. Wallah, you're going to be questioned Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Because Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara wa quduha al-nas wal hijara alayha malaikatun ghilad shidadun la ya'asuna allaha ma amarahum wa yaf'aluna ma yu'marun. Al-Aya, Allah says those of you who believe, protect yourselves and your families from the hellfire by taking your children to them. Wallah, you're not protecting your akhirah or your children's akhirah. You are giving your children to who? To the enemies who are going to destroy your child's mindset and thinking. Why? Why are these? Why are the Muslim community staying in these countries for? Why are they remaining here? The reason for it is darahim and dirham. Not necessarily. There's another reason for it. And you brought many ahadith, many ayat to support your argument. I want to bring one of my own. Okay. And this hadith is found in Sahih of Imam Muslim, rahimahullah. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Whoever sees an evil, let him change it." with his hand oh. and if not then let him change it with his tongue and if not then let him hate it in his heart and that is the weakest of iman mm. the prophet have actually linked the weakest of iman to just hating it in his heart but leaving that and letting the evil take place and actually running away from it and leaving it is even less than even just being there and hating it with your heart how are you going to say now that the people who are staying here are only doing it for the sake of money why can't you make excuses for them and say, actually, they want to change the country because we agree that not everybody will be able to make hijrah. There's always going to be people who fall into that verse who are unable to. Why can't we stay in the West, make it a better place, get politically actively involved, change the society so we're making it better for those Muslims who have to remain there because they have no choice? Okay, I unequivocally disagree with that as well. The reason is because statistics shows the opposite, that they're working more on you than you're working on them. They are changing you than you changing them. They're guiding you to misguidance, than you guiding them to guidance. A research was done by Coventry University on the 20, 25th of October, 2019. A research was done. This research showed that there are approximately 4,500 Muslim heritage children in care in Britain. It's the UK, not any other country. We can, if, if I broadened my research and I looked at Europe, for example, or yeah, any, I looked at America, the statistics would be very high. But Britain, there are 4,500 Muslim heritage children in care in Britain. These children are of Muslim. Keep in mind, these are Muslim children. They've been taken from their families. And their reason for this is that the child has gone through abuse and neglect, family breakdown, a parent or child's illness or disability and lack of family support. And then they say the vast majority are removed by social services on account of harm or profound risk of harm. This child, they're saying, this child has been taken from his parents, maybe because she was forcing him to pray salah at Fajr time. Maybe because she was abusing him, rightly taken away from the mother, maybe. If the mother was abusing the child in Islam, for those in Islamic, let's say she was abusing and she was not doing a good job in Islam, in a Muslim country, who would most likely take care of that child? Another Muslim person. So it's a win-win situation. You're an abusive individual. Listen to this. This is the most shocking part. Go on. The child is taken from the remote. The social services took the child, take the child from that parent uh, because of their belief, of course. But by the way, the act of harm and profound risk of harm is nothing compared to what they describe it as. Uh, uh, how we Muslims understand it. Now, according to government figures, there are 4,560, so it's more than the research by Coventry University. Mm. Pay attention to this. So since the removal of ethnicity from Children and Family Act 2014 was passed, social workers are no longer required by law to match religion and ethnicity when finding families for children. In other words, 
This child who's Ahmed, he can be taken care of a LGBT uh, family. You've gone to them, you've gone to such a, a you small think it, sample size. You have 4,500 kids. I actually, you know, I actually know right now a yeah. girl called Sophia, Sophia. Yeah. She's been taking care of two men. It's okay. not a case. It's not a that, that again, again, <laughs> again. These, we, look, look what we're talking about here. Look, we're talking about a ruling for everybody in the UK, all the Muslims in the UK, for example, even wider than that. I US, Europe. And we've we've taken a sample size of four thousand five hundred people. Who from them, some of them were taken away from their parents, and from them, some of them went into a non-Muslim household. Like you're talking about really small sample size, and using that to say everyone's got to leave the country. No, I, no, I'm not saying. I'm saying. By the way, the honor of one Muslim is great to us. Don't dismiss a one child. <laughs> One Muslim child who's taken by a non-Muslim, he hurts our hearts. Okay. Today, are you telling me right now, if you saw online a mother crying, I can, wallahi, I can show you extensive videos. I, cases I've seen, I've seen mothers come into the masjid to break down because she must have told off one child and all her other remaining children were taken. Of course it would hurt, but I don't base rulings on emotion. I'm not going to then say everybody has to leave the country now because of my emo I'm emotional. I'm feeling like, oh, wow, that really hurts. No, I, I'm not going to tell everyone to leave the country. No, no, I'm not, 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 not necessarily a one peculiar situation that this happened, but it gives you the understanding that you don't even own your own children. You can't do tarbiyah of your children the way you see it fit. This is what I'm coming to. Look what the Prophet said. Let's be straight and frank with one another. Our messenger said, you said implementing Islam, right? Uh, implementing Islam. Mm. There's a hadith Abu Dawood narrated. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, wa hum sab Command your children the salah when they are seven years of age. Wa wa hum ashirin. And discipline them when they are at the age of 10. Yeah. Let me be even more frank with you. The word it doesn't say discipline. Wa means beat them. Okay. The, just the other day, without no names mentioned, without no names mentioned, a family was about to lose their child. I don't want to tell you, someone very reliable to me okay. told me. Okay. A family member was about to lose their child. And the social services had this hadith written on their, uh, on their, on their they had this written on their case study of this whole situation. Do you know what happened? The child just went to school. He said to the other child something about my, my, my father will hit me if I do this. Huh? The teacher called the social services. They got involved. They were ready to go home and take the entire children from her. Now, what I mean is that I am not in any way, shape or form saying children can be beaten and destroyed. And no, that, that's not what I'm saying. All I'm trying to say to you is that if a parent is not fit to take care of her child, the 2014 act passed by the government states that you no longer, you no longer have the rights to choose where that child goes and who looks care of. The whole community can come together and say we want the social services to have their rights to say, we don't want to give it to a Muslim family. Depending on how the social services see it fit, they have the right. This is a child, your wife has been pregnant for nine months. She's given birth, his name's Abdullahi. And he's been raised by a non-Muslim. Mm -hmm. The point I'm trying to say to you, your own child you can't control. The Prophet told us in a hadith, an Imam Muslim narrated, he said, if the children of Adam pass away, their actions are all disconnected except three. Sadaqa tinjariya, a ongoing sadaqa that you give will carry on your righteous deeds for you. Or a knowledge that you have benefited others which they benefited from. You left behind beneficial knowledge for the people. Or you left behind a noble child, a righteous child that makes supplication and dua and invokes on Allah Taala for you. I'm saying, these children who were nurtured in this environment, Islamic history, pay attention to this, we've never seen anyone who changed Islamic history who was nurtured by the non-Muslims or who grew up in the midst of the non-Muslims. We've never seen that. Rather, the qa'idah is man shabba ala shayin shabba ali. Anyone who grew up upon something most likely turns out to be the that Prophet thing. Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his parents were non-Muslims. He changed the whole entire dunya. He came from a family of non-Muslims. Ibrahim Alayhi Salam, his father. We can go on and on. The companions, many of them came from non-Muslim households. Again, How can you say that statement? Again, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a total exception of this situation because he's guided by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and he was chosen by Allah Wa Ta'ala. And by the way, he wasn't nurtured by his mother or father. None of them nurtured him. They both died yeah, when the Prophet was young. His father died when he was in his mother's womb and his mother died when he was only six years of age. So the Prophet ﷺ, keep it in mind 
the the world that we're talking about today. Again, this is another this is another point that you just reminded me, Jazakallah Khairan, which is the West is not a a, a conflict or a clash of just religion. It's not. It's also a clash of morality. Mm. Yani Quraysh, there were things that they held, held on to. Be- even though they were mushrikeen, idol worshippers, they called on to other than Allah, which was a clash of religion. There were things that they held on to, which were good morals. They also had bad morals, like burying their daughters alive. Be- I'm not dismissing that. They wanted to. The do- UK also have good morals. No, but UK. It's no, the same situation. Yeah, but this, this is this, this is my point. The West today have we have an issue of morality and dignity issue against them. For example, homosexuality. It's an issue of morality. It's an issue of religion. No, no put a religion aside. A Christian who has not got a religion in our eyes will say to you, this is despicable. It's abhorrent. We, 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 no, we don't accept it. Yeah, because his religion tells him. There are secular people who come up to you today who don't believe in religion, don't believe in God, who will say this act is just does not make sense. It's filthy to me. Mm. It's an issue of fitrah, as we previously mentioned in our podcast. Now, your child is in a land. La, his suluk gets destroyed. His morality, his muru'a is killed. And also what? His religion. His religion killed. I just want to show you how scary it is. Cool. There was a brother in the UK who had a child. His child is literally mental. So he takes his child. They inject him. They give him medicine. He's, he, his father holds him down. Or else the child's going to destroy things and jump around. He's, the ch- child is insane. So he went to the doctors the, visit, to visit the doctor, sat in front of the doctor and the doctor, so the father's holding his son, just doesn't want this time to, to get a needle or jump out of the window or destroy something. So he's to hold him down. The doctor says, let him go. He goes, what do you mean? I, if I let him go, he's going to, he's not, I'm his brain basically. Mm. I'm the one who holds him down. He goes, no, you think this is Africa? Mm. What do you think you are? He's a free man. He could choose what he wants. We're at that level of Okay You know Okay you, you brought some very strong arguments I want to go back to my question and Let me rephrase it in a, in a perhaps a better way The hadith I quoted About whoever sees an evil Let him change it with his hand With his tongue Hit it in his heart The Prophet never said Whoever sees an evil Run away yeah. okay. That's my point He said change it Let's stay here and change it Let's work on this society The overwhelming majority of Muslims the hadith of Marra'a minkum munkaran fali wa yiru biyadi fa'ilam yastatif fa bilisani fa'ilam yastatif fa biqalbi wa dalika adhaful iman. The overwhelming majority of Muslims in the UK are not learned enough to even identify what is a munkar or not. You're talking about laymen, you're talking a general mass. That's what I said to you initially. A more fruitful discussion would be can the du'at, talabatul ilm, go to these Western countries to okay. give da'wah? Let's talk about that then. That would be a, a discussion and a, and, a, and a point to look at. Like in a da'i to take his family, his children, and he, to live in these countries. Yeah, there's a kitab, I just as a side benefit, I want to okay. encourage people to read. There's a sheikh, his name is Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdullah Subayl. He was the khatib, and the, he was the imam and the khatib of Masjid al Haram, and he was also uh, he was a member of the Islamic, um, senior Islamic, uh, senior scholar, senior scholar, the committee of the senior scholars in Saudi Arabia. And he was also the khatib and the imam of Masjid al-Haram. By the way, when uh, that time when the so-called false Mahdi was taken over the Kaaba, he was the Im- he was actually the man leading the prayer, who had to be taken out of the Masjid mm. uh, with a hijab to cover him and take him out. It was Sheikh Muhammad Subayr, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdullah Subayr. Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdullah Subayr has a kitab called Hukmu Tajannus, Bijinsiyati Dawlatin Ghayr Islamiya. It's a very important book. I think it's worth reading. He talks about the ruling of taking citizenship from a country that is not Muslim. He breaks this issue down. And he brings it back to the first point that we were talking about, the issue of al-wala wal-bara. We think right now, we actually think that why are they not allowing us to practice our religion the way we want? Why are they questioning our you know, method of disciplining our children? Is because of the fact that they believe they've given your ch- children citizenships. They're the ones who educate your children. Some a large number of Muslim, Somali, Muslim, Somali, Pakistani, whatever ethnicity they are, government gives them a hand out, hands out, hand handout, and gives them money. 
um, all of this gives them the entitlement of wanting to feel like they have rights to choose for your children what they can or can't do. So telling me that Mara'a minkum munkaram, Ra'a means a person who can see the munkar and they can stop it. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about a people who are saying, what's wrong with a non muslim Why does a non muslim have to go to the hellfire? Yeah, and asr usul deen. No, that's not everyone. That's not fair. Because I'm saying, talking about people who might see pubs in the UK, people drinking, they know alcohol is munkar. They know it's wrong. So they can't change it with their hands. They don't have the ability. But at the very least, they can work on something together to try and rectify this. Is society. it fair to say that there is, is running away? Is it fair to say? Is it fair to say? Like, I, 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 sometimes, you know, some things are just, well, there's a poet said, well, it's not befitting for the mind if the, if the sun is proof. That sun over there, I have to prove it to you. So okay. It can be seen. In the UK, you and I both know, the largest, largest, Crime rate that's taking place right now is done by who? The Muslims. The Muslims. Yeah. I mean, I, say, I don't know about largest, but what yes, munkar are they gonna? Uh, what munkar are they gonna? Yeah, what ma, what the largest is the Muslim yeah. community. Okay, what munkar are they going to stop? They can stop the things like alcohol. They, they can can't be, even stop their own children. Hmm. I, had a, I know these statements. I'm going to say is going to probably offend some people, but I had a, had a conversation with one guy. Uh, who who, be, who, was, who was an extremist? Yani, yani, uh, was a right wing who believed yani, Muslims are here to take over the UK. I said, "You think high of us, man? I said, you really think high of us, man? <laughs> to think that we we want to take over the UK? We can't even take over our own ho- our own households. Parents, I wallahi, I went to Canada and and I was very emotional when I went to Canada. I for the first time, I saw with my own two eyes. I haven't even seen that in the UK, by the way." I saw in Canada kids carrying cartons of alcohol on the lift going home and their mother has reached a level where she sets in the fridge a section for him. Muslims. Muslim Somali mothers. Setting a part of the fridge and saying to them, this section is yours. Put your alcohol here. And when I spoke to that mother, I said, why are you doing that? She said, I prefer that he does it here than he does it outside because someone's going to murder him. Someone's going to kill him. He's on the streets. I might as well just I tell him have it, but in your room, come out, take it. She locks the fridge for him. I can't. The point is that the yani, the communities, the Muslim communities, the way that they have become only Allah knows. Subhanahu wa taala. I will tell you something else that shocked me. The rate of abortions that are done by teens, Muslim teens, Amina. Uh, Fatima, Nafisa All these Muslim names that you see Who are going to the NHS To get abortions done And they're 17, 18, 19 I know a girl Who hasn't reached I don't want to say the age is so scary She hasn't reached The age of puberty in the UK And she, for the first time I ever heard I didn't even know this existed What they call uh, Sugar daddy mm. A man owns that young girl Muslim He owns her Wallahi She has not reached The age of consent He owns her He fulfilled He's a 40 year old man Married Non-Muslim Kafir Not even a Muslim He owns her Owns her She's, she, He gives her money Every month he puts money in her account She comes over to him This is Hadith wala harad And to be honest Over the years of giving da'wah I came to the conclusion, it might be a very harsh conclusion, but I came to the conclusion now, the da'wah in the UK is, it is damage control. It's not stopping what's going to happen. The people, what you gain from there and what you lose, what you lose is more. Okay, you're talking about the du'at now. Let's talk about the du'at because the prophetic tradition is not to run away from the lands of the non-Muslims, but it's actually to send people into them. Like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Mu'adh ibn Jabal. Let me so just conclude that before you move into this okay, one. There was a man who killed 99 people. The Prophet told us in the hadith of Imam al-Bukhari, narrated in the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, inna abdan qatala tis'atan wa tis'ina nafsa. A man killed 99 people, thumma aradat lahu tawbah. Then he wanted to repent. So he asked about, فَسَأَلَ عَنْ أَعْلَمِ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ He asked for the most knowledgeable of people. فَدُلَّ عَلَى رَجُلٍ then he was to go to that man. فأتاه, he came to the man and he told him. And the man was a worshipper. He said, إِنِّي قَتَلْتُ نَتِسْعَةً وَتِسْعِينَ نَفْسًا I killed 99 people. فَهَلْ لِي مِنْ تَوْبَةً would, would I have any repentance? I want to repent. And the man said to him, بَعْدَ تِسْعَةٍ وَتِسْعِينَ نَفْسًا After 99 people you killed, you want to repent? 
The man took out his sword, he made him a hundred. فَأَكْمَلَ بِهِ الْمِئَةَ A hundred people now he's killed. I don't know on this for earth. I've never met anyone who killed a hundred people. Have you ever met anyone who killed a hundred people? No, never. This man killed a hundred people. Then he asked about فَسَأَلَ He asked عَنْ أَعْلَمِ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ The most knowledgeable of people. Hmm. By the way, this man is struggling to find somebody knowledgeable. Worship this has been pushed towards. So then what happened? فَدُلَّ عَلَى رَجُلٍ He was pointing towards a man. This man was a knowledgeable man. He said, إِنِّي قَتَلْتُ مِئَةَ نَفْسٍ I now killed a hundred. فَهَلْ لِي مِنْ تَوْبَةً Do I have repentance? He said, وَيَا حَكْ Destruction be to you. مَنْ يَحُولُ بَيْنَكُ وَبَيْنَ التَّوْبَةً Who's stopping you from repentance? You can repent if you want to. But the first thing he instructed him is what? He said, أُخْرُجْ مِنَ الْقَرْيَةِ الْخَبِيثَةِ الَّتِي أَنْتَ فِيهَا Leave this filthy land that you've been in. إِلَى الْقَرْيَةِ الصَّالِحَةِ Go to that land, that honorable land. فَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ فِيهَا Worship your Lord over there. This is not the place you can do it. Yeah. The Abid, the scholar is in this land, but he's telling him leave. He's telling him leave. You shouldn't be here. He goes, you leave this land. The man, he made a decision. فَخَرَجَ يُرِيدُ الْقَرِيَةَ الصَّالِحَةَ He left to go to that blessed land. فَعَرَبَ لَهُ أَجَلُهُ Death came to him. فِي الطَّرِيقِ While he was walking. فَاخْتَصَمَتْ فِيهِ مَلَائِكَةُ الرَّحْمَةُ وَمَلَائِكَةُ الْعَذَابِ There's a dispute now between the two angels. The angel of mercy and the angel of punishment. Then Iblis said, أَنَا أَوْلَى بِهِ Iblis said, ah, he's mine, he's mine. He said, إِنَّهُ لَمْ يَحْسِنِي سَعَةٌ This man never disobeyed me for even a second. Every time I told him to do something, he did it. So he's mine. فَقَالَتْ مَلَائِكَةُ الرَّحْمَةُ The angel of mercy said, he's mine. إِنَّهُ خَرَجَ تَائِبًا This man came out repenting. And then Allah Taala pulled the earth in favor of him. And he, what saved that man? His hijrah. Leaving that land.